What up, world? It's your boy, Stack5. The NBA season is in full swing, and you already know that I'm partnering with DraftKings. Right now, new customers who bet just $5 on any wager will get $150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use my promo code SMOKE. That's right. New customers can bet just $5 on any wager and get $150 in bonus bets in your account instantly. With those bonus bets, you can cook up a DraftKings Same Game Parlay. Check out the app every Friday for the All the Smoke Same Game Parlay. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code SMOKE and bet just $5 on any wager and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code SMOKE, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. There's nothing better than bringing my people's joy. Our joy is bold, vivacious, and contagious. Joy gives life flavor with the ultimate blend of rhythm and vibes. When joy takes flight, it can't be contained. It is robust. More than a smile or a laugh, it's an infectious experience. Here's to all the creators that inspire us with their creativity and passion. Keep filling the world with joy. My joy, celebrated by Frito-Lay. Welcome back, All the Smoke. Man, we off to a good start. On a run. Okay, we got a nice LA run today. Um, I wanna welcome to the show, man, someone I got a chance to meet early on, uh, work ethic grinder, uh, had an 18 year NBA career champion, father, my dog, my smoke, one the of my homie. smoking buddies. <laughs> the homie. Trevor Ariza, man. Yes. Welcome my boy. to the show. 18-year yes. NBA vet world champion. What does that mean to Give you Give me now? mine. Just give me mine. That's, that's it. it? Yeah, that's all. Just put in my work. Um, you know, doing what I love to do. Made some great uh, connections with people that I, you know, I will always um, build with forever. So, you know, I got a lot out of the game. The game gave me a lot. And um, I'm appreciative for it. What's it like to th these days? I mean, obviously, uh, talk to us about your son first and foremost, and then we'll get back to what's it like these days. You got a, a young son that's been really doing his thing and kind of making his name for himself out here in these uh, basketball streets. Yeah, man, he's uh, he's putting in the work for himself, man. He gets up early and get in the gym. He's in the weight room. You know, he wants it. So uh, just watching him go through it is kind of like looking back in time and seeing myself uh, doing the same things that he uh, that he's doing now. What's it like as a father, though? Because, you know, we both played. I got my boys are one year younger than your boys, and I chose to coach. You chose not to coach, but you're there, very supportive, walking them through the process. What's that like? Man, it's, it's like, it's nerve-wracking, but, like, at the same time, it's fulfilling, but at the same time, sometimes I'll be wanting to strangle it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you were talking, we were talking in the green room about just the mental side of it, the mental toughness, because our kids are going to have every opportunity because of, you know, how hard we worked. To, to, to get there, but that mental side to me, and we were talking about, is the biggest deal with athletes' kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I mean, you come up different than a lot of times than how we came up, so um, the privilege is different. His privilege is a little bit different, so in order for him to be able to, to actually make it, he gotta love it himself, and that's what I'm seeing from him. So, like the grinding part, the, the parts that are ugly, I try to make it as uncomfortable as I can for him so he can understand that it's never going to be sweet because it, when you're good, you got a target on your back. Yeah. When you get to the highest level, every night you got to turn that shit on because it's a motherfucker that's ready to take your fucking head off and they're going to laugh at you while they're doing just, it. So. Sometimes just because of your last name. Oh, just sure. just because of what time. we did. Right, right, right. Um, that's one thing about him that I like the most, though. Like He wants to be his own person I love completely. Mm -hmm. So like... People will be like, oh, you're you're Trevor's son. He'd be like, nah. <laughs> right. <laughs> My name Todd, is Todd. Mm -hmm. Straight up. So, you know, that confidence and him wanting to be his own individual is is really, you know, it's, it's impressive to me. Mm -hmm. Born in Miami, but raised in LA. How did uh, how did you end up in LA? How did I end up in LA? Uh, my mom wanted to be a movie star. <laughs> 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 Shit. That's fuck. That's the truth. That's how we ended up here. My mom Word. was uh, young, exp inspired, whatever. Wanted to be an aspiring, actress, yeah. inspiring. Mm -hmm. Wanted to be an actress. So, you know, she's a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. So she wanted to come out here and pursue her career, and uh, that's how we end up here. Speaking of your mom, she's so dope. Whatever happened in that place you took me that one night? 
That, that was the best place I ever fucking been in my life. And next thing I know, it's gone. What happened? That man, shit was dope. It was, it was, it was too live, man. It was ahead of its time. <laughs> it, was it, was ahead of, it was ahead of its time. What's yeah. it, like 14, 15? Yeah, that was a long time Jack, ago. Jack, I would try to tell you off camera, bro. That shit was so live. I'm pretty sure I would have enjoyed it. You definitely would have had a good time. <laughs> sure. It was a good time. My mom, my mom knows how to yeah. throw a party. She's dope. Yeah. Shout out to moms. Yeah. What, was, what was LA like growing up as a kid, as a kid for TA? LA for me, uh, as a kid, it was fun, man. It wasn't social media, so you actually had to get outside yeah. and play, ride your bikes, go to all the, the parks to play. Um, you know, you're getting into everything. It's everything that's available for you to, to do that you can think of is available when you are uh, coming up at, around our time. Mm -hmm. Who were some of the kids you grew up with that we would know? So, uh, who? Mm -hmm. uh, Brandon Heath, mm -hmm. Bobby Brown, uh, Hassan Adams, oh, okay. Hassan. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Evan Burns, mm -hmm. like, some real, some pros. Yeah. yeah, Craig Smith, somebody else that we grew up around. But you know, Marcus Watson, Rhino, Marcus Watson, mm -hmm. not known for basketball, but he's in the boxing world. Mm -hmm. uh, him and his family. Uh, who else? Uh, D. Jack, Deshaun Jackson. Mm -hmm. We grew up, played football together. Him and my little brother were on the same team. Mm -hmm. Went to the same elementary school and all that. So, right. yeah, yeah, those people are a lot of talent. That's a shit ton of talent. Them out, them and I'm missing football. a whole bunch of well, yeah, more people. football games and basketball games were live. Oh man, it was always, always, always talent. Um, I played for Inglewood Pop Warner, mm -hmm. um, and we used to play against like Carson. Carson used to have like all the big rivalries. All the really good players played in Carson and Compton. South Bay and all that. So we always used to compete against each other. When did basketball find you? Basketball, basketball came to me. Like I, I guess I understood I had a really good chance of doing something like in the 10th grade. But I started playing basketball um, from the crib, man. My mom gave me the ball um, in my crib. And from then, she just pushed it, pushed it, pushed it. Mm -hmm. You know, so from zero. Yeah. <laughs> from <Zero>. conception. Yeah. <laughs> you attended, For real from conception. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you attended LA Powerhouse, Westchester. Yeah. Uh big time recruit with California State Championship in 03. Um, talk about your time at West, at Westchester. My time at Westchester, it was probably the best school, I think, period, of all any school in the country. But my time there was fun because we known for having like pretty girls at our school, so. Oh yeah, that was that school? <laughs> oh, y'all know for yeah, having them dimes, huh? yeah. them brizzles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, <laughs> our games used to be cracking, so everybody from every school used to come. We used to play against all the people uh, around the state. That was real good, so um, we got to travel. We got to experience life outside of LA too, which was a plus, um, but just Coming up in the school, it was it was it was some shit a lot of the times, but you know, it was fun times too. Legendary games, any legendary games you remember? Fairfax, it's always legendary games against Fairfax, Crenshaw. I remember we played uh, Crenshaw at Southwest, I think it was, and in the first quarter we was beating their ass by thirty. <laughs> so um, yeah, that that shit was live. It was packed. They was good. Two thousand, I think it was. But we was um, we smashed them, and then anytime we played against Fairfax, the wall was sweat. You know that one particular time at their gym, they had to shut the game down because it was too many people coming. Any pros on that team? Yeah, it was um, Hassan Adams, um, Bobby Brown, uh, myself, uh, Craig Smith was on the other team, Evan Burns was yeah, on the gay. other team. He was a pro. Like, yeah, for real. Gay. He was a pro. What for happened me. to him? Man. Injuries, probably, you know, injuries okay. happened to him, but he had probably the most talent yeah, game. <clears throat> out of the whole bunch. Did your water too if you need oh, it. Yeah, they just poured it. it. Yeah. Who <laughs> 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 anybody you modeled your game after? Uh when I was younger, I wanted to play like Penny, T Mac, and Kobe. Those were my favorite players uh coming up. Um, so those three, a combination of those three players. What'd you know about Shay? 
Shay, up, Shay is a fucking monster. <laughs> yeah, Shay is a legend. He's like a legend. Yeah. So like babies that's born now still hear about the legend of Shay because mm -hmm. we st we talk about it right now. So mm -hmm. that's how legendary he is. Mm -hmm. yeah, he didn't even get a chance to to show the world his legendary at the highest stage. So, mm -hmm. you know. We know though. Yeah, yeah we, we definitely know. know. I got a chance to actually, when I was younger or in high school, I got a chance to like play against them and work with work with them and him and his brother. And, uh, you know, they definitely had influence on, you know, where my career ended up going. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dope. Uh, successful high school career, heavily recruited. Uh, you chose to go to UCLA. Uh, who were some other schools you thought about possibly? Florida. Florida was the only other school I really wanted to go to. I love Billy Donovan, who was there, and my pops went there. Uh, so Florida was the other school I wanted to. I actually commit, wanted to commit to go to Florida, but once I called Coach Donovan, I told him that I wasn't coming because I, I was getting homesick. You know, I didn't want to leave my mom. I was 17, I think, so leaving moms would have been, you know, crazy for me. So UCLA, yeah. what's it like when you get there? What's it like? Completely different because the coach that recruited me. It was gone. It was gone. I was sick about it. Who was so who recruited you? Lab and, and okay. Coach Matt. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then Howland, Howland comes, right? Yeah, then Howland comes. It was that was a rough one. Was it? it was a completely different <laughs> said, that was a rough one. <laughs> it was a completely different style of, of play for me. Right. You know, for me being in transition, getting up and down the court was, you know, where I was good at. And he liked to play in the half court. You know, he wanted to grind it out. He was from the Big East at the time. And he liked older players. So me coming in at 17, 18 years old, he was like, nah, bro, you're going to have to learn some shit. But I was really good. So um, I had to kind of play. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we, we bumped heads a lot. He caught me out of class one time. Um, they did a class check. So we went to the, to the court as me. TJ Cummins and Ryan Holland's ass was out of class, or he had to run for some reason. So he made me do like 45 sprints or something. And the whole time we doing sprints, I'm just laughing the whole time. This motherfucker's turning red and shit. He getting mad at he you? He was pissed, man. He was so mad. But like, you know, I, in my head, I wanted to like let him know that like- You're not gonna break me. I'm not, you're not gonna break me. There's nothing you're gonna be able to do mm -hmm. that's gonna break me on this court. Is that why you was one and done? I mean, freshman, you know, uh, Pac-10 all freshman team, uh, you just felt like it was time to go or that that combination of him not vibing with him and the opportunity to go? Yeah, I, I just think that at first I really just wanted to, they had a rule where you could test the waters and I wanted to test the waters, you know, and we had a conversation about that. And we disagreed about the conversation a little Are bit. Are you and Helen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, well, fuck it. Here we go. I mean, I believed in myself. I believed in what I could do. I was going around in these workouts and playing against the top talent at all the places. So, you know, doing that when you you're playing against you stood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plus, I played in the Pac-10 at the time. It was called the Pac-10. The Pac-10 was cracking. Luke Jackson was cracking. And I had to play against him all the time. He was really good. So he was the 10th pick that year. By when the you way. was going, uh, thinking about going to Florida, well, that was around the time when they was winning championships? The year after. The year they after. They started winning. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But they, they, they got won back to back, didn't they? They won back to back. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it was Al yeah. Horford and right? Joe Kim, them boys. Joe Kim, Joe Kim, Kim yeah. Yeah. Corey Brewer. Yeah. Corey Brewer, yeah, yeah. Outside of basketball, how was your UCLA experience? Russ Wood and just making friends and. Well, you know, growing up in LA is either UCLA or USC. You know, and that's what it was for me. Uh, I played basketball, so you went to the basketball school. Got to go to the basketball uh -huh. school. But being around there, being in my, on that campus, you know, you got to meet a lot of different people. It was diverse. That's my first time around a lot of diversity, um, or going to a school that was diverse like that. So, you know, I got to meet a lot of different people, learn a little bit of culture from different cultures. So the experience was dope. It opened my eyes up to the world. Men's gym. Oh uh, yeah. Talk to us about the men's gym and 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 how that I, I feel like that helped our team, whoever made it up from our team get to the league was the men's gym. The men's gym is that's you know, they say you see, uh, New York is the Mecca of who I feel like the men's gym is the Mecca for our who and what we doing. Because if you are somebody, you gotta come through there. Gotta pull up. You gotta go through there. 
Who were some of the people you saw early on when you first started going up there? Uh, um, I seen Bean in there. Um, all the Lakers that used to come in there. Uh, Paul used to be in there. BD. Uh, Shay used to be in there. Um, everybody. You used to be in there. KG used to be in there a lot. Andre Miller. Mm-hmm. Dre, Dre was yeah. nice in them runs, too. Yeah, Dre is killer, period. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> Straight up. Yeah. Um, yeah, everybody used to be in there. You declare early for the draft, summer 04, and you hook up with Rico. Talk about Rico and how did Rico help you prepare for the draft with his burnt ass? Burnt, man. Burnt. Toast. We call him burnt. Toast. <laughs> Man, Toast just like he's a he's an animal for real, like in his mind. So like, just being around that type of energy all the time, it, it you gotta it comes out, or you or you're gonna break. And one thing about me, I'm never gonna I'm never gonna break for for nothing. So you know, it was a challenge, and him challenging me every day to get better. You know, it it, it helped me a lot, and you know. Going through the shit is not pretty all the time. It, you know, it's ugly a lot of the times. You know, it's frustrating. But he just, he, you know, he made you want to keep pushing because he he give you love, but he 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 pushed you. It's and, a tough love. Yeah, at that age, I needed that. People don't know Rico is a big part of our success in Golden State during the We Believe years, and he had one key saying that a lot of people didn't understand, but he said to us on the team, and it resonated quick. Don't be nasty. <laughs> Don't be nasty. That's that's what he say. Don't be nasty. Cause you could be nasty. You could be. <laughs> <laughs> you could be, be nasty, nasty out there, dog. Yeah. Tells me like, don't be nasty, bro. Don't yeah. go out there and be nasty, bro. And he'll let you know, yeah. ASAP. Bro, you look nasty out there. That's nasty. <laughs> what he do, told me that a couple times. Yeah, that's yeah. nasty, dog. <laughs> uh, he be able to. Uh. <laughs> yeah, the sounds, <laughs> the sounds, <laughs> the grunts. Mm -mm. <laughs> Shout out yeah. Toast, man. It's it's dope to kind of see his his journey with our yes. journey. Yep. You know what I mean? Now Obviously, I he wanted to do what you know what, what we did, but he found out that wasn't his role. And you know, similar to what Shay was talking about earlier, Rico's found his role and worked himself up to what the second seat on the bench in in the uh, Philadelphia, Philadelphia this year. Yeah, really you know, good. should be a head coach in the next two or three years. One of the best basketball minds and just motivators and and good people person. I feel like coaching today is not so much about the X and O; it's about relating to these. Players, Thanks. for for sure. Because these 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 dudes met mine is is this is a whole new generation. So Different. he's such a great relator and, and people person. That's why I feel like any of you NBA team that's gonna be seeing this. He always say he always say be a star in your role. Yeah, yeah. You know, be a, yeah, you know mm -hmm. what I mean. And yep. he's definitely a superstar in his role. Absolutely. What do you think about the train the uh, culture of training today? Like, how do you get the right balance of? Training and hoop. See, when, I, when we was growing up, I ain't trained at all. I hooped everywhere. I was a hooper, and I was just saying a few minutes ago, now they got a lot of basketball players don't have that many hoopers. What's your take on that? Well, I think uh, I think right now they doing a lot of playing in the summertime. Like, even now they play more games than what I play, period. But in the summer, we hoop more. They work out more. Um, I think the, the business of the game has become so big that they starting a little bit earlier with – how the business they, mind. Yeah, correct. So they're treating it like a business. And, you know, it again, that's what we all go to school for anyway, to figure yeah. out what we want to do. So the earlier you figure it out, you know, the the more you put into it. So if they're treating their craft like a business and something they want to do, I don't see. I don't no wrong, that's, yeah. yeah. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. yeah. But it could be a bad side to it that too. It could be. Yeah. Correct. You get to it too early, you not have the right mind, not the right you know, group of people around you could go crazy. Mm hmm The next draft you second round for uh second round forty third pick. I went second round forty second pick. Mm -hmm. And look how we turned out. You Jeez they real. <laughs> uh walk walk th walk us through your experience. Man. Cause that's sitting there a long time, I Yeah. My experience. <laughs> that's sitting there a long time. Oh shit, I was forty six pick. Yo, we My all bad. sitting there on the blown. same game. Yeah. My bad, yeah. I had a blow moment right there. <laughs> I was thinking both y'all shouting out what pick. I was like, damn, what pick was I? <laughs> you said that so long. <clears throat> man, my experience was dope, man. I got to experience a lot of different places. So, you know, I got a lot of different understanding. I got to meet a lot of different people. Uh, it wasn't always pretty, uh, but the experience was dope. You know, the cities that I 
I got to play in the majority of them was some nice ass places. You know, I got to play in New York. I got to play in Miami, home, Houston, right? You know what I mean. I got to play in at Phoenix. the crib. I got to play here. You know, I got DC. I love DC. You know, DC is a, a, a dope place. So you know, I can't complain about nothing. But it wasn't all pretty. Mm-hmm. Talk about that. Uh, talk about that first Knicks experience, though, because there's some big names on that team. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. Steph, Penny, yeah. Allen, Houston. Uh, with Jamal Crawford was on that team. Imagine going from no dollars to everybody on your team being hunted up. Crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, imagine that. You know, so it's like you're going into a completely different world. So, like, I'm looking at players that, you know, I'm like, damn, they in the NBA. Like, oh, my God, this is Stephon Marbury. Like, this is Ben Baker. This is Tim Thomas, man. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, And then, like, you you get around them and you see, like, how they – interact and then you realize that damn like you could I could I fit in with them like I, I can do the same thing they do and then they all cool at the same time like they teaching me everything you know because you know I, I did everything for them you know at the time you can you can treat a rookie like a rookie at that time you what know? was some of the shit they used to have you doing anything that used to piss you off man after practice they used to pick up all the balls and they used to just Launched the motherfucker. Jackie wasn't going for that though. No, they tried that with Man King. Yeah, we, we looked at the bitch like he was just talking about his shit. One. Yeah, he's I'm by out. myself, and all of them had bread, man. Like they don't make right. them do some shit. Mm-hmm. That's just right. You know, that's what it was at the time. Mm-hmm. So. Unless you had Kenya Martin as your rookie too, <laughs> he wasn't going. He was not going. <laughs> so Jack said he wasn't going. Oh my god, I ain't got to do. He ain't got to do it. I ain't got to do it. <laughs> right. I mean, I and they was that. kicking the bitches to the rafters, <laughs> and nobody went and got them. Trained the ball boys, gotta go get it. <laughs> Well, I was already traumatized from my first experience, period. Like, <laughs> I got on the plane first because I, I like to get everywhere early. So uh, I got my suit on. Steph had bought me like 10 suits, you know. Shout out Steph. Yeah. He was just talking to him last yeah, night. Yeah, Steph was, Steph was a great the man. realist. Yeah. So he bought me 10 suits. And I'm, man, I'm sharp as a motherfucker. I'm feeling sharp as baggy as fuck, but I feel sharp that's the, as That's the style, though. Yeah. Yeah. So I get on the plane. I eat my food. I sit down on the couch, right? I'm lying down. Isaiah Thomas walks by. He's like, man, congratulations, welcome. You know, you're going to training camp. And he walks by, he waits for everybody to get on the plane, like all the players. So then he comes back up to the player section. He's like, hey, yo, come here. So everybody gets up and come here. He goes, why the fuck is this rookie on the plane right here before all y'all sitting down eating? And then he looks at me, he says, man, get the fuck off the plane and go help with the bags. (laughs) <laughs> and from that point on, I'm like, yo, this motherfucker's for real. Like, <laughs> I can't fuck around with him at all. Yeah. But he also showed me, like, he went, he would go through, like, he'll do anything for you. Yeah, he'll go through all for you. Because later on, I end up having, like, an issue with the coach. You know, like, the, I, I wanted to play. He didn't want to play me. You know, he said some things about me in the paper that I did not understand. Who was the coach? Larry Brown. <laughs> hey, lay around me burnt sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So, but, you know, they wanted to trade me. He And he said, I'm going to trade you to a place where I know you're going to go and play, you know, so I'm give you an opportunity. So he's, as he was, like, hard and teaching me lessons, you know, showing me, like, nothing was going to be given to you, uh, he still was somebody that looked out for me to put me in a position to where I can go show my talents. Mm-hmm. So, where and where was that to? Orlando. Uh, yeah, so mm-hmm. you know, I always respect and love Zeke for that. Zeke had me uh, fucked up with y'all. I, I was a late training camp invite. <laughs> so we were at what, Charleston? Yeah. So I come out there, do well in training camp. They want to bring me back to New York, but they have a rule that you have to wear a suit on the plane. And I'm thinking to myself, like Isaiah, you just talked to my agent. You've invited me out here two days. You know, I, I appreciate it, but like you never said nothing about a suit. So the whole team like scrapped together. Some one dude gave me a belt. Someone else gave me a pant. Someone else gave me a shirt, tie. I didn't look good, but I had a motherfucking suit on and, and, and got back and then started. This team was loaded with, with, with a bunch of money, but yeah. dudes were hurt. Yeah. So I came late into training camp, earned a starting spot, started like the first six or seven games and got cut like Get that. Out here, bro. Out here. Probably because Nate Robinson, though. Yo, Nate Robinson, oh, Nate, it was like Tom and Jerry. He would just always fuck with me. So, you know, I'm just not going to let it slide. So he was, you know, pouring itching powder in my tights and oh, fucking yeah, me up. Nah, and I, I poured salt on his ice cream in front of everyone when he was trying to. It was just. 
it was just a wild time. He he flooded the bat. He flooded the Malik showers, Rose but I got pissed. I got blamed for it. <laughs> Malik was pissed. So I was just we just wasn't acting right. Fucking how, with Nate. How competitive was those practices? Man, there's a lot of talent on that team, bro. It was. It was ultra competitive because again, you still have superstars, even though some you know they were a little older. older yeah, Steph, have, Penny. Yeah, you have superstars on your team, and like. They want they gonna go at you. So Eddie Curry. Eddie Curry was there. Damn. Jamal was there. Jamal Crawford. Q was there. Yeah. Yeah. Kurt Thomas. I played with Kurt Thomas. Strong Kurt Thomas ass. was uh man, he was like a super vet. He what was, was the problem though? Scene. What was the problem? All that talent, how why it didn't work? Larry yeah. Brown couldn't get bring yeah, it, it together. Was, it was just a lot of it was a lot of egos. It was a lot of a lot of <laughs> above my pay grade at the time. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. But you know, looking back, you know, there's no reason why that team probably couldn't have, you know, been a real good team, for real. Orlando, uh, a young Dwight Howard. Um, talk to us about your experience in, in that young Dwight Howard. Dwight was a monster, for real. Like, anything that came in the paint, he was altering or he was blocking. Like, if you scored in the paint, he, he wasn't on the court. Because he, for sure, like around that time, he just dominated everything. And he played for for Stan, and Stan was like demanding of him. Like to me, I feel like Stan helped his career the most because he demanded shit out of him. You know, he put him on a timer. Like, bro, if you go up and down the court, you don't get these rebounds in this amount of time. You're not doing your fucking job, and you can't. You're not helping us win. And Dwight is a competitor as well, so you know he took those challenges and it helped his his career but he was good as fuck. Mm -hmm. What did you learn from Stan in, 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 your, in your time there? Stan was like attention to detail. He was like about, he was no bush. Great at it. He was really good at it. Mm -hmm. Like when you're young, you don't appreciate things like that. Yeah. But as you get older and understand it. You I just didn't like shoot arounds. Shoot arounds was Tate. Tate and knee, knee pads. Bro, he used to make us wear it like you had to wear knee pads and, yeah. and shoot around and you had to tape. And and it wasn't it was no dope. quick 30 minute walk through, bro. We're have. running through the other team's plays I fully. To, he made y'all wear knee pads? Knee For pads, sure. bro. Knee pads. Knee pads and ankle tape. If you don't tape, you fine. He made and he make you run hard. You gotta it's, go hard. It's like so, a gang. Yeah. So when you're done, you really going home to take a nap. <laughs> Cause you because you fucking going balls to the wall for 90 minutes and shoot around. G Hill on that team. G Hill was on that. G Hill was, no, G Hill, I don't know was G Hill on that team. I think G Hill was for Brian Hill. Was he? Yeah. Well, after? No, before. Oh, before you got there? No, I was on his team, but. Yeah, no, no, I'm just talking about what, what, with Grant being there. Oh, okay. how, how, how was it like? What, what was it like with, with G? G was a real cool dude. Like, he was very, like, very, like, smooth. Professional. You know, very professional. Always early, always, you know, taking care of his body. You know, always in the weight room, always in the training room, always shooting, talking, teaching. You know, very, very like uh very, very like a leader, like a real, real, real leader. He was just a cool dude. Mm. Um, traded to the Lakers, 2007, 2008. Um, what was that experience like? Getting a chance to come back home, play with Kobe. Um Life back at home. Man, it was. Y'all lucky because not only do y'all get to come play at home, I got to play for the Lakers. Right. That's crazy. It's like a, it's like being a rock star. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, I mean, nothing like it. Yeah. It's no other way to explain that. So, like anything you would imagine it being for a rock star is similar. And then playing with, you know, the face of the league, it's just, it like, it's like that much, that much more. So, you know, my experience was, Unbelievable. It was unreal, for real. Like, it's unimaginable. I wouldn't believe that I could play with Kobe Bryant, for real, or Lamar Odom, or Andrew Bynum, Powell, those guys. I, I, I wouldn't believe that you could put me in a position like that. Mm -hmm. But you did it and did it well. I mean, what was it like working alongside Kobe and, and, and all those great players you, you mentioned? Yeah, man, it was, it was, it was a good time. It was, it was like, to me, it didn't feel like pressure because I'm just out there playing, you know, doing what I'm supposed to do. So, you know, we practice every day. Practices was always competitive, but it was fun too, you know, especially anywhere LO gonna be, it's gonna be funny. <laughs> always, <laughs> you always. Have a good time. Yeah. And Luke is a funny dude too. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. being around Luke is, 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 is a good time as mm -hmm. well. What did you learn from 
your two years with Cole? Uh, I think the thing that I learned the most playing with Cole is, or just being around him like, like how it was, was no matter what you did outside of, you know, the game, this is what matters the most. Like, so everything that it takes to be good, if you don't do that, I'm not fucking with you. And I was one of those people that he ain't really have to like tell, tell you that, mm -hmm. to, you know, this is what it is. He, he could see it. So like, he'll hit me up like four o'clock. What you doing? Four in the morning though. What you doing? I'm asleep. I'm in the weight room. Come on. All right, I'll be there. We in the weight room for after like I'm doing my own thing, you know? So, you know, it just, it made me like lock into a different space. Any crazy stories that you could tell? <laughs> I got a shit ton of crazy stories. <laughs> We're gonna animate it, so make it good. <sighs> nah. No, I'm fucking with you. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I got one for uh, probably in the, at practice. Um, we like uh, scrimmaging, and B. Shaw and him are talking shit to each other. B. Shaw is one of our coaches, right? Mm -hmm. But they were teammates, and he knew him for back in the time when he was playing against his pops in Italy. So, uh, they talking shit to each other. And I think the uh, second team is beating us at the time. So uh, being getting mad or some shit, he picks the ball up and he throws that shit at the scores table. PJ is sitting on the physio ball, you know. Uh, B. Shaw is like on the court or, or sitting at the scores table doing the score and it hit the bubble gum shit <laughs> and it just splashed everywhere. See B. Shaw gets up and throws the ball back at the team. Boom, fuck you, motherfucker. What's up? Kobe's like, man, fuck you. What you want to do? And he walks out. Five minutes later, he comes back and he hugs his motherfucker and kisses him on the head like, fuck you. Kobe did that? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the same story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. That's yeah. a safe one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I kicked it with him every day, so right. like, that's my dog, yeah, for real, like yeah. for real, for real. So, yeah. what, so I, I, I want to get like, what did, what did he mean to you? Like, he, 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 I remember talking. He, he loved you. Yeah, for what, sure. What, what did he mean to you? Man, he, uh, he, he gave me an opportunity to play on the biggest stage. He vouched for me. I remember we were in Portland, and uh, I was coming off the bench. Luke was starting at the time, and I think Luke had maybe made a turnover. Uh, at a crucial time. And he was like, man, take this motherfucker out the game, man, put him in. And so after, from that point on, like I started the rest of my time, the rest of my career. So like him vouching for me kind of just gave me the, the confidence that I needed to go out here and like play against the top players at all the time. Mm -hmm. Your first year, you guys lose to Boston. Uh, Cope said well, that was one of his toughest losses ever. Uh, how was it for you? I mean, for me, I, I think I still was just like, I mean, I'm a, I am I like to compete. I'm used to winning. In my high school, we won all the time. Um, so losing is never a sweet feeling, but I don't think I took it as hard as they did. Um, I think I, I wasn't in their training camp, so you know, I was gelling with them. So that loss was hard, but it wasn't as hard um, as they took it. But after the game, I know like, Going to the hotel, the bus was shaking, the fans were shaking our bus, throwing rocks at our shit. And we get back to the hotel, everybody goes to Kobe's room, right? We just take shots, like talking about like how we gonna come back next year and be better and be better. And like once we got back uh, to LA, he sent me a text. He said, in, a, in like a week, I'm gonna send you the blueprint to how we gonna win this shit. I'm gonna send you everything that I need you to do to help me. And he sent me like a text of all the shit that he wanted me to do and times when he wanted me to come fuck with him to work out. And, you know, we worked throughout the summer. The shit that he told me to do, I did that shit every day, twice a day. And, you know, we, we ended up winning. This so you shit. came back next year and, and, and you face Orlando, your former team. Yeah. Um, what was that experience like? I loved it because I wanted to shove that shit to him, like for real. You was in there huddle talking shit during timeouts Fucking and everything, right. yeah. The whole time I was on 10, like I wanted action at everybody. <laughs> Even though I loved them, like right. I just, but still, you know, they didn't think that I could play with them. So, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to show them that y'all couldn't really fuck with me like that. Right. <laughs> so, it's a different feeling yeah. to play a team that either cut you 
Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I did the same thing with Jersey. They cut me, and I ended up playing them in the finals the next year. So that shit is sweet. It is. Yeah. It was real sweet. Yeah, so just winning and winning on their home court was even more of a, like, you know what I'm saying? Like stepping, you know, stepping. I was feeling myself. Um, the only part that I thought that was, you know, that I that was fucked up is that I'm watching Jameer and, and Dwight, you know, watch us win on their floor. Um, but, you know, other than that, I was like, fucking yeah, right. That's it. <laughs> yeah. uh, one a first championship. One last thing before we uh, we move on. You shared uh, something dope on Cole's birthday um, on Instagram. Yeah, Talk, uh, share uh, share. So uh, I think it was the next year um, I get to Houston, um, and I, it's preseason, and I see this shot on Instagram or something. Maybe it wasn't Instagram. Maybe it was Twitter or something back back whenever it was. And I sent it to him. Like I didn't say nothing. I just sent him the text. And he said, yeah, like, if I miss, that means somebody else have a good shot. But what I was saying was, damn, you're not going to pass it to nobody. Three, 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 three dudes yeah, on him, right? Somebody got to be open. So, <laughs> yeah. But he was like, yeah, they can get it. Right. Get it off the rim. <laughs> get it off the rim. Yeah. There should be a good shot. They should have a good chance of putting it back. Good offensive position. Correct. After 09 championship, you take a long-term deal with Houston. Why LA didn't offer you the bag? Why LA didn't offer me the bag? Why they didn't offer me the bag? I don't, I think they were just more attracted to Ron at the time. You know, Ron was fucking amazing player. You know, he was in Houston. He, we played against them the round. He fucking destroyed us, really. You know, T Mac was out. Him and Yao was, you know, doing their shit against us. So, I mean, I can understand that, but you know, did I want to leave? No. Yeah. Was it my Choice to leave, no. Yeah, but Houston was not a bad place. Not Houston at was all. a fucking amazing place. I Home. spent the most time there. So yeah, yeah. I what was that it. experience like though, playing with you know big names like that in Houston? Yeah, man, I love Houston. Houston was a good time. It was a great city. Playing with the uh, players that I got a chance to play with. You know, so who was that? Was White. Yeah, who was on that team? Um, James, Chris. Uh, Luke, Eric Gordon, uh -huh. PJ, P Tuck, y'all was tough. Compella, yeah. Clint, my LB was on my, on our team, you know. So um, LB, Bobby Brown, Kyle wasn't on that mm -hmm. team. Like, Kyle wasn't on that you yeah. was on the team that came back and beat us, right? Yeah, we popped y'all mm -hmm. three one, right? We was up three one, bro. The, the part that that got y'all cracked is when that's the Clippers. When yeah, damn, when Blake they and uh, DeAndre was fucking on the bench doing all this bullshit right here. That's what got y'all cracked. I didn't know that. What yeah. was they doing? Young shit? Celebrating. Y'all was up a dub, right? Uh-huh. Remember, they had sat James for the fourth. Yeah, they sat. James was pissed, too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they sat him. And then, you know, y'all was like, oh, waving to the crowd and shit. Like, oh, it's over. We out of here. Yeah. Okay, sit man. down. <laughs> <laughs> sit the fuck down. Walk them down. Yeah, oh, walk three, that. That's three, a real walk down. Three straight games, bro. Yeah. Three straight games. Yeah. Blake and DeAndre, thank them. They, for real? <laughs> I didn't know, bro. This is the first time I'm hearing of this. I'm going to have to investigate. Yeah. <clears throat> I've seen it on the Jumbo Trail. Oh, really? Was so called. everybody Michigan. saw it. Everybody's seen it. Is the Rockets team one of the best teams to never win the championship? Yes, for sure. I mean, we probably had the best offense to the, at that time. We was top five in defense. We was really good in defense. Um, is that the year CP pulled his hamstring? That's the year CP got hurt. Y'all were giving more the Warriors problems. And we was fucking them up. We had them really on the ropes up until he got hurt. And mm -hmm. then we just, they just turned it back on. They, they got life. And I feel like in series like that, that's why they have four games because anything can happen, you know, and anything can change like the momentum, the momentum mm -hmm. of, of, you know, a series. And that was, uh, a shift, you know. Everybody was hitting shots for their team at that point. Was was CP and uh, Beer beefing? I don't think they were beefing. I just think that like they just think different. You know, they're two different minds of the game. Two different geniuses, if mm -hmm. if I could say that. In different ways. Yeah. CP is more of a more of a pit bull. CP is yeah, more. Of a James bull. more easy going. James is James. James to me is like. He a killer, but his he his you know he 
it's just his isms that's more, you know, than the, than the killer. Mm-hmm. What a, what was it? You probably played with the best James Harden we've all seen. Oh, yeah, for that, sure. That, that window in Houston. What, I mean, what was that night like, What night in, night out, seeing his greatness? Like some... I Can mean, you compare it to anybody? I guess if I could compare it to anybody, watching Gilbert play. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Gilbert, when he like when he was hibachi and shit, you <laughs> see? <was> crazy. <laughs> Man. Untouchable. Nobody could fuck with him. Nobody. Nobody. Yeah. So that's what I would compare like what James was doing then, because it was like triple double 60 <laughs> with a 60. What a he'll 60 have a ball. 60, 17, and like 15. Then he'll have 47, 15, and 17. And then he'll have 30, 20, and fucking 15 or some shit. So, like, just watching it is crazy to on the court. And then, like, you know, like, you know, dinner. <laughs> we're going to go to dinner. You're going to have, have a good time. time. Yeah, you're going to have you know? a good time. Houston loves James, as, as you were saying yesterday. As I say, they love him. But again, though, the thing that I, lo- I love the most about it. him is that he don't really give a fuck about anybody else, what they think about him. Mm. You know, because nobody else got to walk in their shoes. But, right. So. You know, that's one thing I think that everybody should kind of pay attention to. Like, you know, really. Regardless. Yeah. yeah. He do his thing, whether he uh, you like him or you, or you don't. Mm-hmm. That's how it should be. Uh, talk about um, your time in, in Washington with John Wall. John Wall. I love John. I love John as a point guard because he's so, so fast. And he put so much pressure on the rim at that time that, like, I got wide, wide open, shots. open shots. Like uh-huh. everybody was getting wide open shots. You got young Brad, you got me, you got uh, fucking Al was there with me. Harrison? Al was mm-hmm. Otto, yeah. Porter. So all these guys who could really shoot the ball, he he was making the game so easy for him. It was fun. Looking back on your career, uh, you know, your, your, your experience, your years, the teams, the opportunities, the players, what do you think about when you look back? Because most of the time we're so busy in the moment, we don't get a chance to kind of like, well, I played 18 years in the NBA, won a championship, played with some of the greatest players ever. Yeah. Man, I, I try to kind of, I, I guess right now it still ain't hit me yet. I try to go through life or whatever, living in the moment instead of like looking mm-hmm. back at moments. So I, I ain't look back at a moment yet. How, how how many years you been this year? Second first, year out, first year out, or second year, second year, yeah. like going into the second year yeah, out now. Yeah. yeah, miss it? Nah, not really. Cause he burnt. <laughs> not even. I I sat down cause my son. Right. Know, my son is really good, and I want to just give miss it. everything right to basketball. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. Say something. Yeah. Say same, something. Same same reason. Yeah. Like I said, I retired the the, the, the year with Golden State. I still had two years left, but it was I was missing all the time with the boys. You burned too. Yeah, <laughs> burned. Right, burn. State of the league, present day. I mean, kind of more of a European style, a lot of versatility, which which still fits your game. Uh, you know, a, a younger you. What, what kind of work would you do in this league? I think I would be really good. I think so, especially being young. Yeah, play so many different positions. Right, I can play guard so many positions. positions. Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, do a lot of different things. I don't think that gets enough. Well, now it's getting more credit, but like earlier on, I don't think that's why. Like when you like talk about like Otto Porter, like his style of player, low key, like all of them players are like getting bags and stuff. So mm-hmm. like the kid in Minnesota, the long kid in Minnesota, the brother in in, in Charlotte too, right? Like they're brothers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then bro for the Lakers just now, who uh Vanderbilt. He I like him. I love his game. He don't even got and he's learning how to shoot the ball too. Mm-hmm. So like players like that are, That's what the game yeah, is. Yeah, that's what the game is. And mm-hmm. then you got your super talents. So mm-hmm. that kind of bothers me though, you wait till you get to the league to learn how to shoot. Like I just don't get that. You ain't. I guess they've been in positions where they ain't never had to learn how to shoot. I mean, that's just. But see, I think that's just a part of the game. Like when you're a hooper, defense, shooting. Like that's a part of basketball. Like when did they say work on this and don't work on that? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I hear like that. when they gave us the ball, we worked on everything: Unless handle, you for Larry Brown. shot, defense. <laughs> all, you know what I'm saying? Unless you played for Larry Brown. <laughs> I, I did play for Larry Brown. Run on every, get block every shot. Get every rebound and run on every play. I got it. I can't say that because my best year was with Larry Brown. My best career year was with that's, Larry Brown. We that's had the what he's number saying. defense in the league. Don't, shoot, right? don't fucking shoot the ball. You don't even supposed to listen to him. Yeah. Well, how? Oh, shit, we didn't. 
Yeah, but he was oh, he was on his way out. Then yeah. he was at he was with the Knicks. It was yeah, a little was different fun. vibe with him then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. No. Hey, I didn't listen. I guess AI. I'm just saying, I didn't listen either. I ain't AI, but I didn't listen either. <laughs> you are burnt. Burnt. And he, I'm we not, not? I'm not All as burnt. burnt as you, but I'm burnt. <laughs> you not, not as burnt as me? Burnt. Not as, as burnt. <laughs> not as burnt. It's the line, I'm going to get there. Yeah. You see what's going on. Somebody mm-hmm. got to push me over it. What I'm going to do? You going straight. Are uh, you way over there? <laughs> you not even by the, the burnt yeah. side. You way past yeah. the burnt side <laughs> of the line. Yeah. You're not even going to see the line. That was, I'm going to go past straight through, through yeah. it. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you feel are some of the better 3 and D guys in the game today? 3 and D. Uh, damn. Can you give me some? That's know. a good question, too. It is a good question. I was saying that. Damn. Tuck? Yeah. Okay. So but, can but, I but, get but, nah, you, but nah, I you can't, can't do that. He could score too. Yeah. Facts. Some, some nights Tuck can hit a house when he was in the kitchen. So <laughs> he can actually, you can't leave him open. No, I can shoot it. So that's, that's different. See what I'm saying? You can't just say that. KCP? KCP is good. He can shoot that thing though. He really could shoot it. And he played D. Herb Jones, oh fuck, yes, Herb Jones is good. I like what he do up there. Yeah. New Orleans got a mm-hmm. nice, like, they got- You know who I put in that guy? Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon? Solid. Aaron Gordon's That's good. what he was for them, this but whole championship score. run. Mm-hmm. Oh, Aaron Gordon. Aaron. Aaron, Aaron uh, and Denver. Denver, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's good. Uh, well, let me think. Let me think about my team. He, I guess he didn't shoot no threes or free throws. Who? He struggled at the line. Who? Aaron, the, yeah, that's what, that's the only shots he was getting this year was threes, right? Damn. No. Gross. Okay. All right. Let me think. Well, I might be getting three and D in a two way. I feel play. like Kawhi used I'm to be that. I'm thinking two way player. Yeah. I'm thinking two way player because three way, three and D and two way is different. Three and D. Yeah, you was a square too. You I'm saying three and D and two way player is different. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So three and D mean you play different. You only shoot threes. I don't want to shoot threes. That's what I'm saying. Like, help, help me with that. Let's just go. Let's just go to the next question. Yeah, no, no, help me with that. I want to know the difference. What's the difference between three and D and a two-way player? So a, a guy that I say a guy that plays defense and primarily shoots threes. Kawhi, That's yeah. not the only thing he KG, does, Kawhi. but he primarily shoots three. A two-way guy is Jimmy Butler, where he can give you whatever you want. Kawhi. PG. Bruce Brown is what? Three and D. Okay, I about sudden, but yeah, okay. All right. Okay, my bad. I thought you was about to he put was him a, in there. He was a two-way player. Absolutely not. <laughs> He's stupid. Fuck out of here. Best player in the world right now. Giannis. Oh. How can you go against that, though? I would never go against Giannis. Because he got everything. <laughs> the game, the attitude. Yeah. Yeah. Who is Trevor outside of basketball? A lot of different things. Burn. <laughs> Man. Uh, Father, Father box, sure. you're a monster in the Father. business. If, if you don't mind sharing some of your, I know you don't. I know you're a private person. His whole if, little clique, low key. They, his whole little clique, low key. That a lot of people don't talk about it, but they got a nice little structure of homeboys, and they all doing their thing. You know, what I'm saying the business where you, Bobby, all y'all doing y'all little thing. But he's invested in a bunch of. He's invested in some. <clears throat> Trev's got some uh, a nice portfolio. What kind of you want to well, share? I try to do my thing a yeah. little bit. Mm-hmm. I, I know Buffalo Wild Wings is one of your big, uh, one of your bigger things, right? Yeah, my, my whole thing, the way I, I try to move is like, I try to move behind the scenes. So when you hear about it, you know. Mm-hmm. I ain't never going <laughs> to talk about it. I ain't never going to like brag on it or mm-hmm. drop my dick on the table. Mm-hmm. It's just if you so hear about trad. it. You know, you know. You know. That's so true, too. So that's what I'm doing. That's what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> he's he not going to drop his dick on the table. Yeah, never, never. Nah. But if you know, you know. Yeah. If you know, you I'm know. A, I know. Y'all, I was trying to get it to see if y'all, he could tell y'all, so you know, but I know. Uh, quick hitters, uh, we've enjoyed your time today. Uh, first thing to come to mind, let us know. MJ, Cole, Braun, rank them. Uh, MJ and Kobe, one, and Braun, two. Mm, that's my first time hearing that one. But I said, yeah, one, yeah, one. I'm a creator. Dope, dope. Creative. Top five L.A. born hoopers of all time. Born. Oh man, obviously Gumby. Uh, man, there's too many. I, I feel like it would have to be like a hot category. Plate. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with Shay. What uh, about hot plate. 
I don't, you just on. like that name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that shit hard. <laughs> that shit hard. Uh, John Williams is good. So, wait, so who is your so Gumby, Gumby Shay, Shay, John Williams? Yeah, Tayshawn. Oh, Tay oh, yeah, man, forgot about Tayshawn. And uh, BD. Mm. Paul, I, it's too many people. <laughs> it's Paul. Tony Bland is one of my favorite players mm. ever. I just like his style. That's mm -hmm. why his mindset. Fucking Keelan Fortune was real good. Kenny Bruner. Kenny Bruner. Pooh Jetter. LB. Hassan Adams. The list goes on. Man, there's so many people. There's yeah. too many to name five. That's crazy how many LA Hoopers came out in that. Casey kind of Jacobson. A, crazy good. Kind of Jumper. a. Uh, Capono, mm -hmm. Cole, Josh Childress, fucking Dijon, huh? Man, it's a bunch of them. All of them. D right? The real, all of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, a, it's too many people Crazy. to name a five to me. Marcus Williams was fucking sick, by the way. Craig Smith? Craig, yeah. But all these, guys, but all these names you name, are they all time? Yeah, okay. all time. They okay. cold, like okay. cold to me, all time. Chris Mills, for sure. Um, one album you could really, uh, listen to on repeat? Blueprint. Where were you at when that album dropped? On the bus at ABCD camp. I was at UCLA. I remember that shit. Mm -hmm. Got it right from that Tower Records in Westwood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your favorite okay. rapper? Huh? Oh, your favorite? Yeah, and, and Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne meets yeah. Lil Wayne, my goat. Wayne, yeah. yeah. First car? That I was able to buy? No, drive. The first car you ever drove. Uh, it was you Cherokee? Okay, what year? 2000. Oh, it was cool then. You was all right. Yeah, I was just, it was 2004, 2003 or something. High school. Oh, you was, yeah, you was, you was nice. For, that was your Godfather first car, huh? That was yeah. dope. You was riding good. You must have been a booster. My yeah. Godfather gave Yellow it to Beetle. Sam, Sam Watson. Okay. Yeah. Oh, gee. I had a Yellow Beetle when you hit the brakes too hard. To, like you got hydraulics on the two door. I had a Caprice Classy. You had yeah, to see. drive with your arm out the door to keep the uh, door from flying <laughs> open when you made turns. Sick. But it had the velvet interior though. That shit was soft. <laughs> and it used to, you know, float over the bumps so there was no shocks. Like if you, that shit, go ahead. <laughs> Top five per perimeter defenders of all time. Bruce Bourne, mm -hmm. uh, for Ron sure. Artest, uh, Early for sure, Kawhi. I'm gonna go probably um, Xavier McDaniels. Uh, Scotty Pippen. Nice five. Five dinner guests, dead or alive. Huh? Five dinner guests, you plus five. Me plus at a five. Table. Do whatever y'all do. Mike Tyson. Um, current Mike or heavyweight champ Mike back when he was boxing? Uh, current Mike. Okay. Yeah. Current Mike. Gonna get the best. Yeah. We got the same birthday, so oh, I, don't, really? I already know what current Mike was like. <laughs> uh, <laughs> early Mike. Yeah. You know what early Mike was like? Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh, who I say, Mike Tyson, um, let me see, Tupac. I would like to talk to Tupac and see what that's what I'm talking about. Um, shit, and just people that I that I fuck with, like my everyday people. Well, give us three more of them everyday people. Who gonna get that seat? Stop trying to mass group people, Trev. Give I'm us three more. But that's him, though, dog. That's just how he Who does, dog. Because you give them a pass to do it. Who no, else you bringing? I'm not bringing. Kobe, I already had, I had a great time with Ro, so. No, that would be hard. That would be a hard one. So probably not. Uh, who else? I'll probably sit down with uh, Bezos. I would like to get him at a table. Um, who else? Yeah, I'll we'll talk about some money. Al Heyman. And uh, I need some comedy. Probably Will Ferrell. Mm. Yeah, well, I'm funny as a motherfucker. Yeah, that'd be a sick table. Mm -hmm. If you could see somebody on all the burn, I mean all the smoke, who would it be? <laughs> but you have to help us get them on the show. Before he answers that, can you take your hat off real quick? <laughs> you want to see my? I got this knot. You see, I've been rubbing my head. I got this knot on my shit. Dog. All the burn. All the burn. Y'all know I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Did you ha have y'all got Did James on here? Oh, we would love to have James on here. I got to get the beard yeah, on here. Yeah, you got to help us. I just I just want him to come on the Friday, and we do the show on the Saturday, so I can go hang out with him Friday night. Free night? Yeah, I need that. Just a day in the life? I've been hearing about it, and that's my little bro. I just ain't never get a chance to experience it. And I'm a fool my damn self. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed.
Indeed. Well, Trev, man, we appreciate your time. Okay. Congratulations, man. I don't think people like you, because you, not that you even give a fuck, but you be behind the scenes. Uh, but we just want to commend you, man, 18 years. Appreciate it. Champion, and, and even more than that, the father you are. I know all the stuff you've gone through, and it's, just, it's dope to just kind of see this evolution of you, you know, after all these years. So proud of you, bro. Appreciate that, man. For Thank sure. You. No doubt. Always love, bro. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. That's a wrap, Trevor Reza. All the smoke. You can catch this on Showtime Basketball YouTube and the iHeart platform Black Effects.